On this episode of Lady K Sailing, we talk all about navigation software. We also head into town to do some provisioning before we leave the Bahamas and head for the Turks and Caicos. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to episode 48 of Lady K Sailing. I can't believe how close to episode 50 we are at this point. It is wild. Feels like a great accomplishment to get to 50 episodes. Um, if you're interested in seeing when we started, you'll want to start at episode 18. I made a playlist on our YouTube channel, so if you just look for our playlist, you'll be able to click on Watch From When We Left. And then you can skip all the PHRF racing and the boring and the stuff we didn't film very well or edit very well. For our first 17 episodes but at episode 18 is where I think it starts to get good. We didn't leave Georgetown as planned. We wanted to leave earlier this week and there's a huge blow right now. It's like 25 knots of wind out of the northeast to east and east is the way we have to go to get to the Turks and Caicos so we don't want to be bashing into 25 knot winds. It's just uncomfortable and it'd just be silly to go now. Georgetown is so easy to stay in because it has everything you need. So we're staying in Georgetown. We're well protected. Um, it is a bit rolly. You can probably see that the boat's moving a little bit. Um, but it's not uncomfortable, it's not terrible. So we're still in Georgetown. We're gonna leave early next week for the Turks and Caicos when this weather dies down. Um, and then that leaves us here to cover a few more things before we leave Georgetown for you guys. So first we're gonna cover navigation. Um, we've been... When it comes to navigation, you have a couple different options. The sort of tried, tested and true is the chart plotter. The problem with chart plotters is they tend to be very expensive as an upfront cost. You're talking several thousands of dollars depending on how sophisticated you want. So the problem with a chart plotter, other than the setup expense of buying the thing in the first place, is every place you're going to go, you have to buy the little chip for. And those chips can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. If you're going to be traveling through the Great Lakes and down the East Coast or through the Bahamas, through the Caribbean, you have to buy a chip for every place you're going and that can add up very, very quickly. The other problem is if you don't get all the chips you want, you're gonna to get to a place like Georgetown and you're gonna need a chip for wherever you decide to go next because we hear people on the net every morning saying, hey, does anybody have a Garmin chip for this place or that place? So that becomes a problem. They don't sell them here and they're very difficult to ship in anywhere. So you're gonna to have to buy all your chips up front and stick to a plan because those are the chips that you have and they're just hard to find. So outside of chart plotters, and this is most of the boats here, there's 300, 350 boats in the harbor and probably 90% of them are using some form of a tablet and a piece of software on the tablet. And that seems to be the way to go now. You of course do need your paper charts and your guidebooks and different things like that. But for your everyday moment to moment use, a tablet seems to be king now. And, and I mean, seriously, almost everybody's using these things. So we've got a couple tablets on board. Um, ours are both iPads, but I wanna to touch on the different options. Um, you can of course get a Samsung tablet and that's cool. I find that Apple or iPads are tend to be a little bit more refined and a little bit more user friendly. They also might be a little bit more expensive, but I think you're getting what you pay for as far as user friendliness. The Apple operating system is just so good these days. Anybody in the world could pick up an iPhone, including a four year old and figure out how to use it almost instantly. Um, it's just so easy. So I kind of lean toward Apple because ease of use. Now, iPads you can have for cheap, and this is what we use. We use seven inch iPad mini twos. These are cheap. We got both of these on uh, like a Craigslist kind of thing. Uh, I think one we got for 300 and one we got for like just over 200. Um, they're used, but they were cheap and easy and they do tend to last a very, very long time and they do take a beating. This one's for example, has fallen from the companion way and landed on the floor more than once while we were sailing. So refined, reliable, cheap, iPads are easy. The seven inch we use because anything bigger seems to drain its battery too fast. I mean, the more screen real estate you have, the more it's gonna drain its battery. So the seven inch is a perfect compromise between big enough to read and small enough to last for a long time. Now, iPads are something that is a bit of a debate as well as the Samsung tablets too. Um, which one do you buy? And I can tell you for iPads with certainty because I bought quite a few of them and we've used iPads for 2,500 miles of navigation through three different countries. Um, there's two iPads. There is the Wi-Fi only iPad and then for a little bit more money you can buy the cellular iPad. 
Now the difference is the Wi-Fi only iPad does not have its own GPS chip. I repeat, it does not have its own GPS. So it really doesn't work for this purpose unless you buy an extra little part that plugs into the bottom of it or Bluetooth to it or whatever it is, which is just added expense anyway. If you're gonna go the iPad route, get the cellular version. And you know it's the cellular version because there's a little slot in the side for a cellular SIM card. Now, these don't have cellular SIM cards in them. You don't need a cellular SIM card. You don't need cellular service. You don't have to buy one of these and then call T-Mobile or AT&T and get a SIM card and pay for a monthly service. None of that is required. The importance of having a cellular iPad is inside this iPad, because it's the cellular version, it has its own dedicated GPS chip. Again, no SIM card required, no service, but if you get the cellular model for a little bit more money, it has its own independent GPS chip right on the board. And that's all you need. You don't need to plug anything into it. You don't need to Bluetooth it to some little uh, GPS receiver. It just knows where it is based on satellites, not based on cell towers, not based on anything that's gonna be unreliable. This connects to satellites because it has a GPS chip built into it. We've been in situations where there is zero cell service, no cell towers at all. The iPads work perfectly. So once you figure out which tablet you want, then you have to look at which software you want. Back home, we used iRegatta because it's good for racing, but there's also iNavX, I think it's called. And there's, of course, the big dog is Navionics. Um, we use Navionics and most of the other cruisers here use Navionics. We go to a lot of meetings on the beach with other cruisers who are making the next leg of the journey. And like 10 of us will get together and say, okay, we all wanna leave on Tuesday. And everyone seems to bring an iPad and they all have Navionics. And everyone, it's sort of the, the fluent language of cruisers, long-term cruisers, is they all bring an iPad and they all know Navionics. Now, I'm gonna take you through Navionics. And, and again, we've used this for a very long time. Um, we have two iPads, two iPhones, they all have Navionics on them. So I'm gonna take you through it right now. And I'm gonna show you exactly what to expect if you use Navionics and sort of what some of those features are and give you an idea of whether or not this is something you might wanna do. So I'm gonna screen record the iPad so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So let's jump over to the iPad. Okay, so here's the iPad, Navionics boating app. Um, you can see we got Candy Crush on here too. That's when we're bored at the helm and we have nothing to do. So at Navionics iPad, we're gonna open that up. And I actually already had it open, so let me just clean it up a little bit. All right, so when you open it, for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to download some maps. And this is ahead of time, before you leave your cruising ground, you can see what maps I have downloaded on this particular iPad because it's the white areas. We started in Miami with this app um, because there's a Caribbean version of the app. So you can see I've downloaded all the way from Miami all the way to Grenada. These are pre-downloaded. You only need the internet connection one time to download all these maps. So go ahead and download your entire cruising ground all at once and then you're good. You don't need an internet connection again until you're ready to sort of update the maps, maybe once every six months or so. Now, Navionics has a purchase price. It's once a year, it's about 70 or 80 bucks, but trust me, it is worth it. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push the little button in the bottom left corner here, and that will focus us on our boat. So there's our boat, and I'm gonna push the little plus to zoom in, or you can of course use your fingers on the screen to zoom in, but for ease of use, I'm just gonna keep, keep hitting plus until we get there. All right, there's our boat, the little red thing. And you can see we are in sort of the Georgetown area harbor, Great, Great Exuma Island, Stocking Island right on our bow. And one of the first things I wanna talk about here is you see these little anchors and these little sailboats and stuff. This new Navionics has the Active Captain overlay, and this is new this year. If you've ever used Active Captain, you know that it actually has updates from other cruisers about what to expect in certain areas. So if we were headed to where we are right now, I could zoom in and say, where would I like to anchor? I don't know, there's a couple little anchor icons. Let me read them. So this one's called Volleyball Beach. Let's see what the cruiser said about it. They said, great holding, lots of activity. This is the home of Chat and Chill and Ground Zero for the cruising community. Uh, I like that, that's good information to have. Maybe if I wanna be a little more protected, let's go see what this one in here says. There it is. That's the Stocking Island anchorage. There's 29 comments in here and it gets four and a half stars. So it must be pretty good. And again, I don't have internet right now. This is all pre-downloaded with the maps that we downloaded when we had internet in Miami. So moorings are available, daily price, it's got the prices in there. 
straightforward channel marking check charts closely to ensure you're not anchored in the supply channel cool and there's going to be miles and miles and miles of comments um, we were anchored over here in blue hole let's see what that says hurricane hole moorings we spent a little bit of time here you've even got the contact phone number for the guy who runs these moorings isn't that fantastic right in your program without internet so this thing already knows everything you're going to need to know pretty sweet now i've already gone into the menu on this particular ipad and i've set my boat speed and my depth and that's important to tell the uh, Navionics that because if you're going to use it to check, plot a course, um, you're going to want to make sure it doesn't go into shallow water or do anything that your boat shouldn't be doing. But this already knows our boat speed and our depth, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot a course and show you how that works. So a couple different ways you can do this, but the easiest way is to push route at the bottom and then automatic. You can set a manual course, but let's see automatic and let's see what, I, what Navionics does with this. So it opens the course window on the side, and you can see at the top there's a from and a to. I'm going to push the from, but I'm going to push the little arrow. Instead of picking a manual spot I want to go from, I'm just going to push the little arrow because that's going to use my current position since it already knows where we are. Now let's say we want to go maybe up island this way. And maybe we want to go in one of these little cuts somewhere. Can we get in here? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's say we want to go in here. And we're going to anchor for the night somewhere up here. So I'm just going to touch and hold where I want to go. There's a little anchorage right here. You can see. So I'm going to touch and hold there. And that is going to set my from pos or my to position. So now you can see Navionics is working it out. There, it's done. And it should draw the, the line on the outside here. There it goes. So what Navionics has done is it has plotted the most realistic course that it finds based on my keel depth or my draft. So it's got us going out sort of following the magneto line and then jumping out into the ocean and then we stay on the ocean side all the way up and then it shows us how to get into the place that we were trying to get in pretty sweet and you can see on the left it's calculated the miles that 27.5 miles from our current location it's going to take four and a half hours and use about seven liters of fuel i never put our fuel burn in here so it's just guessing um i can't imagine we would actually use that much if we motored the whole way but anyway if we hit the go button It'll zoom in on our boat. And you can see in the top left, it knows our speed. And as we drive along, this works just like the GPS in your car, the boat will move on the screen and you'll be able to just follow the blue line. In the top right, you can see the distance to the next waypoint or the little blue circle. And the bottom right, you can see the distance to the finish line. So it's all pretty cool. You can also hit the track button and it will draw a yellow line behind your boat showing you where you just came from um, and then you can go over that at the end of the day and see what your average speed was and how many miles you covered and you can actually compare it to the blue line to make sure that you did steer your course properly. Pretty cool stuff. One of the other cool features with Navionics is if you want to start planning your day, there's the measurement tool in the bottom right. So we're going to click on that and you can actually measure any distance you want from any two points. So if you're approaching an anchorage and you want to see how wide it actually is, sometimes the charts are misleading, you can use the measurement tool and you can zoom right in and you can measure the width of anything you want. So that's 1.1 nautical mile width of that little channel there. And one last thing that's really cool about Navionics is you need your tide information for the places you're going, especially if you're traveling through the Bahamas or the ICW. So if we hit the search button in the top left, we can, of course, type in anything we want at the top. If you're looking for a specific marina or a specific city, type it in and it'll find it. But at the bottom, I'm going to hit Tides, the last thing in the list here. And it is going to show me the tide areas or the tide markers that it knows about. So we're going to go to the one closest to us here. Um, you can see we're here and there's a tide marker just over beside us. And we're just going to click on that and hit the little blue thing. And now, again, no internet connection. It's already memorized this stuff. Um, it shows you that across the bottom, the little window opens, and you can see that right now, 7.33 a.m., it is high tide. You can move the window along, see that low tide is at 1.46, and then high again at 8 o'clock tonight. And then you can look at tomorrow, 8.06 a.m. and 8.30 p.m., the next day and the next day. And it goes on for a few days to give you a pretty good idea of what to expect in your sort of passages you're going to be making as to what the tides will be. So this covers your charts and your tide tables. Anyway, so that's Navionics in a nutshell. This is what we've used and it works. And most people down here are actually using the same thing. So if you're considering a navigation suite, I would strongly suggest 
an iPad, the cellular version, not the cheaper Wi-Fi only version. You need the cellular version. And Navionics, absolutely worth it, awesome. The next thing we're gonna to do today is go into town, look for some boat parts, do a little bit of provisioning. Hopefully you'll join us on that. See you soon. Hey guys, one of the things we haven't covered yet on Lady K Sailing is propane. I know we talked about solar and we talked about water, but propane is the other great big thing that every cruising boat seems to need. Now we have two tanks. We have this guy. It is a fiberglass, I think it's 17 pound. And then we have this one left over. And that was from our barbecue back home. It was full when we left, so we brought it with us. Um, the 17 pound lasted us about four months and then uh, it was empty. So we hooked up the old metal one that we knew we only had one use left out of. I mean, this thing is junk. It's ready to go in the garbage. So it's empty now. We're back on the, uh, the 17 pound tank. We got it filled while we were still in the States. So we should get a few more months out of that. But we're gonna ditch our big old metal tank because it's probably end of life anyway. And somebody was nice enough to give us this one. So it's a little bit smaller, but uh, it's in very good condition. Another cruiser just gave it to us. So we are gonna go try to get that filled up today because we do need some propane. Uh, and we wanna have a backup bottle just in case our fiberglass tank gets empty. So we're gonna go and see what we can do about that in Georgetown right now. Ooh, a little bit of a bumpy ride, but we're here, tied up at the resort. And now we just gotta wander around until we find the propane. Let's go. Grab my shoes. plant for the whole island because when you live on an island you can't get power any other way so they build these big diesel plants that run big generators and power everything and the propane plant is next door Propane success. Met some cool people too off holiday. We are gonna now scoot over to the other dinghy dock in town and we're gonna see if we can go to top to bottom and get some boat parts. Okay, we're gonna take you into town to top to bottom, which is like the marine hardware store here. It's pretty sweet. Lots of boat stuff, lots of everyday stuff, and it's just off the government dock. It's like a two minute walk. So let's go check it out.
enjoyed episode 48 and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, huge thanks to our patrons who help us keep us going. And if you haven't done so already and you're considering it, you can become a patron too. Uh, links down in there in the bottom. And uh, yeah, one extra thing this week. Stay tuned for the premiere of my own YouTube channel uh, called Ladies Aboard. Uh, I'm not going to give any more details than that because it's not all finished being set up. But stay tuned and we'll see you soon.